just jumped off uh, a Ron Clark online national conference. And the information that was shared is just so overwhelming that I just want to share this quick, 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 quick tip. If, in case you just didn't know how to do this, I'm going to share a quick tip with you. All right. So I've already kind of started um, creating this. But what one of the teachers from RCA, I think his name's Corey Collins, he was talking about how he's made a bookshelf because I'm assuming he's the reading teacher at Ron Clark Academy. But he shared how he made a bookshelf for his students. So basically what he did was he made a pretend bookshelf, which I'm doing right now. And all I did was take one of the shapes here and I'll just make one real quick. Took one of the shapes, um, made it like the spine of a book, if you will. And then from the inside, I just changed the color. Let's go with blue on this one. And then I took it in just a little bit so it actually looks like, well, you can make it thicker, how thick or thin you want it to. And then these little lines here, all I did was go here and get a line and just click it. And then I took the line, turned it the way I want it to turn. And of course I took it in to make it shorter, okay? And then to get it a little bit thicker, I went here and did about four, I think. Actually, I need to do this first. Let's click on it. Change it to black so that it's black. And then let's make it a little bit thicker. And then all I did was kind of pull it up so it's at the top. Actually, I'm going to make it a little less thicker because I don't think I made it this thick. There we go. And it's a little bit shorter than I would like it, so I'm going to stretch it out just a little bit. Perfect. And then to keep from having to do that all over again, I'm just going to copy, command V, paste it. And then I'm going to put the other one at the bottom here. So that's basically all I did was to make all I did to make the spine of the book. Now, so that you don't have to keep making, and what he did, he made a spine for each student in his class. I think he had about 20 spines on his cover. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually group these together so that my lines and my um Book spine will stay together, so I'm going to just hit group. So when I move it, it, everything moves together. And I'm just highlighting everything, holding my mouse down, highlight, highlighting everything to do that. I'm going to do it again. And then I'm going to right click and hit group. All right, so now I got everything together. So to keep from having to do this over and over, I'm just going to copy and paste. So now we have book spines. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to change the color of some of these so that they're not all the same color. Let's make that one purple. Got our book spines. Now of course you can change the shape if you want. Maybe make this one a little bit skinnier. Make this one a little bit taller. Got a bookshelf. Now I'm going to scroll this down because after the top, I'm going to make it appear to be a real bookshelf. This is King's bookshelf. All right. I want to also do. And what he did, he put the students' names on the um, the actual, I'm going to turn this text box so that it's the same size or going the same way as my bookshelf, I mean my book spines. So in this book, on this bookshelf, I'm just going to write student, student one. And then just so that it looks uniform, I'm going to make it center. Then I'm going to change the font so that it's a little bit bigger. Let's do this impact here. And then we're going to make the font maybe 24. Perfect. So 
what you want to do since you have nine students you're going to create nine slides so we're going to create nine slides here so say for example if you want to share this google slide with your students everybody has access to it and the whole purpose of me showing you this is because when um the teacher mr collins showed showed us this um what he uses in his classroom each student shares this google slide and so this was a way that he um his students um this is the way his students communicated with each other what books they were reading okay so um, I can't show you the snippet of the video because it was, we did have to pay for the course and it's just for the people that were part of the um, PD. But um, each student created their own slide with their name and then they shared the books that they were reading. And so um, on the slides, each student had book already read, current book they're currently reading and the book, let me see, kind of give you a visual. Let's be quick. <clears throat> I'm going to change this to current book because this will be the book you're reading in the title. And then this will be next book. All right, so basically the students had to share their um, summer reading. So they had to talk about the, the current book, just to spell current, the current book they were reading, past book, and their next book they're reading. So each child had a their own slide. And each child did whatever they want. They can include their picture. They include a picture of the books that they were reading or the books, books that they were have read or books that they were going to read and so on and so forth. So um, let's go ahead and name this. Or what the beauty of this was when they shared this and when he shared this to his Google Classroom and, you know, the students went in and modified or did whatever to their individual slide because the slides even though i have student one two three and four and so forth on theirs they actually have their names on each book slide and so what he did was hyperlink each of the books say for example how many of the students he had in his class in our case we have nine he did this he highlighted it then he went in to go to link okay and it says slides in this presentation. So say for example, if he wanted to hyperlink this first book to the third slide, okay? That would be student number one, okay? And apply. So when we click on this slide, say if it's in presentation and I wanted to go look and see what student one was doing, I would just click on that and it'll take me straight to that student's page without having to flip through each slide. So that was something that I did not know. Now I knew you could upload a link from the internet or link a video and do all that, link voice records, you can even link your Loom. You can link this to a um, Google slide, but I did not know that you could link slide to slide. So some of you probably knew that, I was blown away. I was thinking of all the possibilities, all the things that I could use in my classroom with this. I mean, you could do it with, say if you had a handout that you uploaded as a PDF, you can put all those handouts in one Google slide and put the student's name on each one. Say if it was something practice, I wouldn't do tests because they'll probably just look at each other's slide, but you could upload the PDF or the practice activity into the Google slide and each child does their own activity. And instead of having to go into present mode to and clicking through each slide, you can just say, okay, let me look at student seven and, or student eight. And I just felt that was just amazing. So I'm gonna do it more time. Highlight the student, go to insert link. And instead of pasting a link from the website, you go slides in this presentation. And I'm just gonna go to the next slide hit apply now it doesn't really have to be in present mode to do it you can click on this and then do that and bam it takes you to the slide right right then right there so that was the great information that i wanted to share i just had guys stay tuned because there's more there are so more google is my new best friend like for real <laughs> thank you for watching